Hi guys, Sensei D here with another kata. Today we're going to go over lives and health systems. Thanks to Sensei Richard for writing up the guide for me. Um, I'm going to go over a few simple tricks to make your lives look a lot cooler. So, to start off, the easiest way to do so is actually just by creating the variable itself. So what's going to happen here is we're going to create a health variable. We're going to go to variables in the dark orange section, hit the make a variable button, and name it whatever you want. So for me, I've already named mine. Make sure it's for all sprites and hit OK. And on our scene here, you can actually see the variable that I've created for this uh, project. I've done health and I've done lives. I chose to stick with the lives part. This checkbox here on the side actually stands for whether or not it's visible on the scene. So you can actually implement a system as simple as that checkbox. You could have it in the top corner. You can move it around just like you can a sprite. But you can't really make it look any cooler than, well, the number. You can right click and change it to the large readout. Um, I wouldn't recommend this slider option. Otherwise, your players can actually choose how many lives they have. And we don't really want that in a game they're trying to make a little more difficult. The other way you can do it is actually by utilizing costumes to represent your lives. So I went ahead and made two different styles, first being these obvious bright red hearts. What I've actually done is I've created a full bar of health, right? I've created four lives, four hearts, and in succession and going upwards, or I guess downwards in number, I've reduced the hearts. The easiest way to do so is by duplicating each of these and actually deleting one heart at a time. So there's like the th three hearts if you've got three lives. So now that you have all these costumes, what do you do with them? So when I coded this, I have it reacting to the amount of lives in the, in the variable. So until the lives equals zero, so until it has no more, uh, this is just a repeat. So in the control section, and you grab an operator for equals. So until it equals zero, you're actually switching your costume. And what this does is it changes to the number, the costume number. So for lives, this is changing to costume of number four. So as we see here, that's the four hearts. So I've coded on another sprite that you can't see here. What happens when you lose lives? So let me actually redo that. So as you go downwards, the lives um, reduce. And then after it hits zero, I hide it. So that's one way to do it. The second way to do so is through the classic health bar look, right? So I've created this health bar. You're free to use this when I share this project after this video. Um, you can flip it however you'd like if you want to rotate it or whatnot. I've set up, just similarly to the, uh, the heart bar, I've set it up so that full health is number four, you know, three quarters, half, one, and then I also an empty one. So in this case, I have a image for when there is no more health instead of just hiding the block or the sprite, I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do instead is repeat until lives equals zero, switch costume to live, and then change it to empty instead of just hiding it. So pretty simple. I'm going to have it work. There it goes, quarter health, and now it's empty. So we just actually blew through three different ways to show um, lives. Two are very, very similar. Um, it just is a matter of your creativity. How do you want it to look? The next way is a little different. It's a little more involved, but I think you guys can try it out for yourself. Um, I've created the code already for the sake of this video. What's happening is I actually have one lone star sprite. 
he doesn't have any friends, he doesn't have any costumes. Um, and what I'm doing is actually creating as many clones as there are lives while hiding the original. All of the clones that you see are the representation of the lives. Um, using cloning, which is in the control section, for however many lives I have, I've created them and by using variables, so I've created a variable for each sprite. So when you click on this and you make a variable, the variable is going to stick with that clone or that sprite, and only they're going to know what number they're holding. So from there, all of my clones are actually going to hold their number. They're going to be like, okay, I am the fourth life or I am the third life. That's what this code is doing right here. And then at the end, in this forever loop, it's checking, are there as many lives as there are me? So if the star is number four, but there's only three lives, he's going to actually delete himself and disappear. So you guys can test this out yourself. As I said, link will be in the description below. When you change it, all of them disappear. If I were to make maybe 10 lives, let's say, it'll do the same thing. Oh, I mean, although it's going to fall off the screen, let's try and adjust that. I'll move it to negative 200 or negative 150. So now these guys are going to flow off the screen still. So there you go. There's 10 lives. You can actually make it super, super dynamic. It's not going to work quite the same for the costumes that you see here, but it does indeed grow to however you'd like. So if I want 9, I'm going to save. I want 10, and then I want to reduce how close they are to each other, kind of make it look like a health bar. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. I just wanted to show you some of the simple, easy ways you can put this in your game. So this pretty much concludes um, our kata today. If you have any questions, be sure to hit us up on social media or on Slack. Uh, we'll be posting the link down below to this project. Thanks for watching.